Oh, and by the way, having a maxed out dexterity pff, doesn't matter. The only way to get into a chest safely is to cast a destroy trap spell from a scroll. And even that makes the chest explode. But you know what the sickest thing is? The sickest thing of all this? There's almost never anything good in any of the chests. The reward is never worth the risk. All the best shit in this game is either lying right out in the open or on dead bodies. But we gotta do it, right? You gotta open treasure chests. We're like hardwired to get loot. And also, you need to do it anyway because you need all the coins you can get because all the fucking magic spells in this game cost an arm and a leg. So you gotta rob everybody in this game blind to get it. Oh, and if anyone ever sees you stealing or even moving something that doesn't belong to you, this asshole appears and makes you explode. Explode like fucking Looney Tunes? I mean, Jesus Christ. He blows your ass up for the most minor offenses. It's fucking nuts. Oh, but apparently I can go murdering city guards with absolutely no repercussions. Figure that one out. But I suppose I'm getting ahead of myself. I've got to go back to the beach. The gray beach where you start because I have to explain how not Ultima this game is. For instance, there's no character portraits of any kind anymore. All the dialogue is in this weird, blocky, digital font, which just doesn't belong. Also, we don't have companions anymore, which I suppose I get because we're in a new world and nobody knows us, but it's just out of place considering we haven't gone alone since Ultima 2. You just can't interact with the world nearly as much as you could in Ultima 7. Remember when you could bake bread and forge swords if you really wanted to? Well, that's out. The weapons and armor are also far more limited. We only have one-handed weapons. There's no pole arms, no ranged weapons of any kind, no bows, no guns, unless you count Molotov cocktails and some things you find called death discs, which are so inconvenient you'll never use them anyway. There's no lock picks, and for a game that essentially requires you to steal from everybody, you'd think that would be a given. And the game is so easily exploited to max out your stats, it's hilarious. Hell, the strategy guide flat out tells you to do it, not that you really need a strategy guide to figure this stuff out. I did in about two minutes. Just draw your weapon and left click to swing, and keep on left clicking for a half an hour. For extra fun, just beat the shit out of Devin for a while. See, he's a plot-critical NPC, so he never dies, and he never even fights back. He never even really gets mad. Because your strength and dex go up as long as you're attacking something. And it doesn't matter what it is. Even if you're attacking nothing at all. I can max out my whole character within 30 minutes of booting up. Did you want to max out intelligence? Just cast a spell over and over again, and when you're out of mana, rest for an hour, and then keep casting it until you're maxed out, which will take about, mm, 10 minutes. Game's broken. Well, at least you'd think so, right? Check this out. Even with a maxed out strength of 25, look at how long it takes to drop one zombie. Can you believe that? And I have a magic weapon equipped. Imagine if I didn't max out my stats how long that'd take. Uh, common city guards? Forget about that. 20, maybe 30 hits? It's just unbelievable, and I didn't even mention the one repetitive overhead smash attack you have. It's, it just looks stupid. The avatar belts a fucker over the head over and over like homie D clown. This is for you, and that's for your dumb ass dead. There's just no complexity or strategy to the combat in this game at all. It's just walking up to dudes and click until they die. Just clicking over and over again. I'd call it similar to Diablo, but that'd be an insult because there's actual maneuvering and tactics in Diablo. I kind of feel bad about complaining about the combat in Ultima 7 now. I mean, sure, it was pretty uninvolving, but at least there was still strategy in preparing for combat. There was party management there, it wasn't just clicking. Although, if you don't really feel like fighting, most of the time you can just run away and they don't even bother to chase you. After all, almost all the enemies in this game are zombies. They're not gonna catch you. Alright, well, I've been kind of dancing around the issue because I didn't want to start off this review by going completely apeshit, but here's the thing. I, um, I originally bought Ultima 8 on floppy disk, not this. And if you have no idea what in the hell floppy disks are, you probably weren't even alive back when we used them, but back in the dark ages, before the internets, people used to store data on things that looked like this. You could cram upwards of 1.44 megabytes up on this sweet baby. This was still around the time we were figuring out lasers and optical media. Anyway, the floppy disk version kind of had a little, um, problem? The problem being it was kind of, sort of, completely, absolutely fucking unplayable. I mean, hopelessly broken on a fundamental design level. 
And it's because Ultima 8 has the absolute worst jumping controls I've ever seen. Yes, I repeat, jumping. For some insane, bewildering reason, they decided to make platforming a major focus of their new dark, adult-oriented role-playing game. Who in the hell thought Ultima needed this? You know, I've reviewed a shitload of Ultima games, but I don't think I ever complained, you know what this game really needed? Platforming over instant death pits, and lots of it. And it sucks! Oh, it sucks in so many ways. Like, just being able to jump up on a ledge directly in front of you, okay? You have to be in just the right position, facing the perfect angle to the wall, one degree left or right, and you just hop up and down in place like a fucking idiot. But that is so small potatoes compared to the floating rocks in the fucking water. These fucking rocks. You come across the first set of rocks about 20 minutes into the game, and I guarantee you, this is where you will smash the keyboard after about 15 minutes of trying to cross this fucking lake and failing about a thousand times. Oh, and you will fail! See, you jump by clicking both mouse buttons at the same time, but there's no way to really target where you're jumping to, because you only ever jump straight ahead. And I know that seems obvious, but it can be a real fucking problem in Ultima 8 with its camera angle, because if you're even slightly off shit... <laughs> If you're even slightly off-center, you fall in the water and die instantly. Not only do you have to angle yourself precisely for every single jump, the isometric perspective here makes it impossible to judge- Ah, oh, damn it! The isometric perspective makes it impossible to judge distance and your angle. There's no way to tell if you're lined up with a distant- Asshole! Fuck you! What am I doing wrong? He keeps overshooting the fucking cocksucker! Why are the rocks so fucking tiny anyway? Who put these things here? I mean, sometimes you'll be right- Oh, bullshit! Oh, fuck you! Fuck! Oh, what is that? Fuck! Don't you just love it the Avatar can't swim at all? I mean, at fucking all? The guy's completely helpless the instant he gets in more than ankle deep in the water. Just drowns instantly. Oh, there's a spell that lets you walk on fucking lava, but not one that keeps you safe from the enemy deadlier than grass. A oh, fucking pool. Oh, fuck your ball. Fuck you. I think the actual reason he drowns instantly is because there's a monster in the water at all times, in every part of the water, waiting to drag you under the instant you fall in. I mean, this fucker is everywhere, even this guy's pool in his house which is floating in outer space. Just literally following you around and waiting to devour your ass. One might raise the perfectly logical question why it didn't eat you the moment you dropped in the water at the beginning of the game. And that usually leads to another perfectly logical question. Why am I still playing this piece of fuck? The only way you could have beaten this game back then was to literally save on every single rock after every single jump. And <laughs> there are dozens of these areas. And get this, later on, the rocks rise and sink. And after that, they move side to side. <sighs> Fuck's sake, I can't believe this. Oh, you have to tippy toe backwards on the rock before you leap forward. God, that's how picky this fucking platforming is. Half a step off an instant death. That's about a fucking- What?! No! 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 so disastrously bad they had to release a patch, but remember, this was before the internet was in common usage. Now a patch is no big deal, but back then this was a huge hassle. The first challenge being even aware there was a patch available in the first place. I don't even remember how I got the patch now. I probably had to dial up a BBS, and I bet half of you don't even know what a BBS is. Later on, patch versions became available on CD, and almost every version you can find now is patched to fix the platforming. Basically what it did was allow you to target jumps on exact locations with your mouse cursor, which makes it easier, I guess, but it's really clear the platforming was intended to be a major focus of the gameplay. They were really proud of this because there's so many of these areas. So the patch makes a significant portion of the game completely pointless busy work. You still want to save before making...